Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning with Washington University. This is Module 2. We are looking at Pandas and Machine Learning for Part 3. What we will look at this time is training and validation and how you can use Pandas to set your data up into these specific par partitions. The training data is the data that the machine learning model was is going to be fit to. That is what your neural network is actually learning from. Validation data is data that you are taking for your neural network to evaluate against once you are done with training. You don't want to use your training data to test your neural network against, otherwise it might have simply memorized your training data. That's called overfitting. There are two predominant means that we're going to deal with for these, training and validation split and a k-fold cross-validation. The training validation split is the more simple of the two. For this, you just have a data set and you're going to split it into training data and validation data. What you, the, the split doesn't matter. You'll sometimes see 25, 75, you'll sometimes see 80, 20. These are all valid ways of doing this. You basically take the neural network and you fit or you fit or you train it, both words mean the same thing, and you create that neural network. You then take your validation data, your 20%, and you use that fit neural network to actually evaluate it. Once you have that done, that gives you a much, much more confidence that the neural network can, tr can um, predict accurately data that it's never seen, which is the validation. It's seen all the training data before, and it, it validated it. A common comparison of this would be if you were taking some sort of a certification exam and they gave you a practice exam, if you just took that practice exam over and over and over again, eventually you'd probably be getting nearly 100% every time you take it. But when you go to take the real certification exam, you might not actually get as good of a score. And that is because you've, you've just memorized the uh, training data that you had, the training exam. This is the code to actually do this. This is not even using a neural network yet. We'll get into that actually in the next module. But we are essentially creating the, the auto MPG path to that. We are reading the data in. We are also randomizing it. So we're shuffling it. That is very important because just imagine if your data was already sorted in some way. For the iris data set, which is those flowers, they actually, the, the data set that you download usually is sorted. You have three species of iris flower, and so each one third of this is, is a species. If you grab just the validation set, you would only have one type of iris flower in your, um, in your validation set, and that would be a really bad validation set. So you want to fully shuffle all of the data first and then do the split. The way that we're doing this is we're basically just creating a mask. We are generating random numbers, random integers, in the length up to the same length as your, as your data set. And then we're essentially taking all of, those, um, all of those random numbers and determining if they're below 80%. Actually, they're floating point. They're not integers. So, Again, looking at how to um, really visualize what's doing, let me create another cell uh, real quick. So if we run this right now, we get mostly the same result that we had before. If I ran just this part, numpy random number, that just generates a random floating point number between 0 and 1. If you pass a value into here like 10, it's going to generate 10 random numbers. If we say less than 0 0.8 on those 10 random numbers, the ones that are less than 0 0.8 are going to be true. The ones that are not less than 0 0.8 are going to be false. 
So if you look at this, this really did do sort of a 80-20 split. Each of these numbers, if our data set was 10, true, 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 we only have, we have three falses. So this was a 30-70, but it, it's, it's random, so you don't necessarily control that. It's shooting for about 80, and the more numbers you put into here, the closer it is going to be to that 80-20 split. But what we're going to do is take the length of the data frame and put that into there. Now we're going to have a much bigger set. So this is essentially taking the entire data frame and saying one by one, do we want it in the training set or not? So the false ones are in the validation set. The true ones are in the, um, in the actual training set. Now we extract the training set by basically taking the data frame and that index is applying the mask to it. So only the ones that are true are going to be there. This, the tilde, flips the logic. It changes all the trues to false and vice versa. And that's how we get our validation data set. And then I just print the length of each of those. Now you can see that each time I run this, we get a slightly different distribution because of the, of the method that we're doing this. But you get about an 80-20 80, 20, 80, split. The more rows you have, the closer it's going to be to that. So this is, there's several ways to do this, but this is one way in particular that you can do a, um, a training validation split. What we'll use more often in this class, or pretty well most of the time, is a k-fold validation, cross-validation. This is good because you can train, you, you use your entire data set. You basically flip through it. So if you look at this one, you're never going to train on the validation. So if you happen to put data that was particularly valuable in your validation set, you're never going to see how the neural network would have, uh, would have responded with those. What you do here is you take your data set and you essentially break it into five folds. Those five folds are evenly distributed. If you take, if you just imagine it like a piece of paper, you fold it in, you fold it five ways uh, very accurately, and then you take those folds and you combine those folds back together to form the training and validation set. Now you're going to actually train five models or five neural networks in this case. The first neural network that you're going to train, that first fold becomes the validation set. All the remaining folds are attached together and they become your training set. Next neural network, fold two, it's its turn now to be a validation. The rest of the folds are put together and they become the training set. And you basically just do this with each fold one time getting a chance to be the validation set. This gives you five neural networks. What you will do is take each of those neural networks now and you will basically query it for its validation. So you trained it with these, model one. You trained it with two, three, and four. But you take fold one, you ask the neural network to predict it, and it predicts it. These fold one predictions are what you call out of sample predictions. They are out of the sample that was given to the neural network, so their prediction is, is pretty indicative of what the neural network will be able to predict on other data that it has not seen. Model two, or neural network two, neural networks are a type of model, you put its validation in, and you take all of these validations and concatenate them together, and now you have, a, you have predictions that are completely out of sample. You can take all of these predictions and evaluate the accuracy, or um, accuracy for classification, um, the difference for regression. We'll see more how to do that in, in, the, in a subsequent module. But this shows you, this is all out of sample data, and it shows you the true accuracy for that neural network. Now to do this, you will we'll use scikit-learn, which will use it for several things throughout this uh, semester. 
We read in the data, we shuffle it, re-index it, but now we're going to create an object called kfold. And kfold is used to, to take the data and to break it into those folds. So what we do is, well, first of all, let me point out one thing. Scikit-learn made some changes, and you might get errors or deprecation warnings if you're using the old version of kfold. Make sure you're using the kfold from scikit-learn.model selection. When we set up a neural network for kfold, I'll show you an example of what the old style code looked like, just so you know not to do it. But make sure that you use scikit-learn model selection, or you'll start to get these pink warning boxes down here that will um, alert you to the, that you're using something that's obsolete. They both work the same way, it's just the uh, scikit-learn did some re, uh, restructuring. But what you do is you create kfold, kf equals kfold5. You can do really any size cross-validation you want. You can do a 10, heck, you could do a 100. If you did a 100 though, remember, you'll be training 100 neural networks. On one other point I wanted to mention too, in the case of this, what you will often do is, because now you have five neural networks, so you have to think about which one you're going to use. We'll see some examples of this later, how you pick which, which of these. You might, you usually don't want to pick one of these. You want to either average them together or look at how the average of how far you had to train each of these and then just put all your data together and train the neural network up to the level uh, that, these, that these neural networks had reached. We'll see examples of that when we get into the, uh, the, the, the module that's specifically on training a neural network. You then call kf.split. This returns two values. So you're actually looping, oh, this is not nested loops. You just get a train index and a validation index each time. Now this loop, this for loop, is going to loop five times. Usually you ask for five folds. We will then extract our training data frame and our validation data frame. This just says pull in all of the training index, all of the validation index, and we use those to, we'll use those eventually to train our neural network. For now, we just print out the sizes of it. So you can see they, they distribute pretty uniformly between the, between the five folds. This is the end of module two. In the next module, we will take what we've learned in the first two modules about Python and Pandas, and now we'll start to actually use uh, Kira's and TensorFlow to create some neural networks to, predict, to make some predictions on these data sets.